Andrew, how'd you say Reptar? Reptar. Hey, let me see some moves with it. Oh, oh. This one's more of a show dropping. Show jobbing. And as Italian, we only say bada bing. Yo, let's get the fuck out of here. Yo, let's go, let's go, let's go. New York is crazy. You never know what's gonna happen. Oaxacan cookies, Taiwanese night market bings, halal birria tacos, and futuristic robot dumplings. All of these trends are popping up around New York City, and we want to determine whether they'll stick around. Is this staying or going? Let's find out. All right, Marco, you're here in Brooklyn Dumpling House. Be honest, what part of Brooklyn is this? This is Williamsburg. This is definitely hipster for sure. This ain't the Brooklyn. Okay. That's dying down these days. We're we're trying to make the comeback for that. Okay. Honestly, if this is a sad song, <laughs> man's going on the face. I'm not doing it, man. I'm not doing it. I saw an angel. My order's ready. I'm about to scan the barcode. Please enter your pin code. 17. Don't let the suicide doors up. This is how they come. Dumpling cups. Here we are, we got our dumplings from Brooklyn Dumpling Shop. They come in these cups. Fusion, fusion dumplings, dumplings and fusion egg rolls. Let's check it out. This one's cheeseburger. It ain't bad. Texture's a little bit weird, but it's not bad. It tastes like a cheeseburger. Wasn't a fan of this. This kind of tastes like some uh, like frozen um, type of like freezer. All right, you guys, we are looking at a pastrami dumpling with a mustard sauce. This is super weird. Pastrami, pastrami dumpling. dumpling. Well, I'm not gonna lie. The dumpling skin and the pastrami is, is a little bit weird together. But it taste wise, it has yeah. it. Pastrami is a New York staple food with the dumpling. A little weird, but I actually like that one. Here they have these fried dumplings. They look like little fried shalom baos, actually. So I'll tell you this, guys, they are expanding. You're probably gonna see some of these locations. Uh, oh, 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 watch out, watch out, oh watch out. Oh my yo. god. Shoot that, shoot that. That's crazy. Yo. Oh, so they shit. just had a Lego so Fried shalom bao. Let's see how it is. This one's good. This one to me tastes like a very high quality, like hot pocket style, but I am enjoying this one. The spicy shalom bao, it's the best one so far. Oh, we gotta hurry up, guys. Yeah, we're about to dead. die. Yeah. We're about we're to dead. die. Hey, listen, so, I can't swim, guys. Hey, you guys, we got too many to get through, so we're just gonna just give our opinion, okay? All right, apple. This is a cheeseburger shalom bao. I'm trying this dumpling. This Ooh. is a rib. Yo, who wants it? We have the garbage. Oh, oh. God. Oh, Yo, let's go, let's go, let's go. Out. Hey guys, uh, New York is crazy. You never know what's gonna happen. Let's get out of here. All right, real quick guys, we had a, you know, call an audible due to uh, exploding disgusting water out of a fire hydrant. All in all guys, what was your opinions? Cause we had, a, we had some things yeah. that we liked, some things we didn't like, right? Yeah, you know what? I'm just used to the prototypical regular pork chive dumpling. And I think that's what I want to stick to. I'm gonna go with a go. For the globe and other markets, like a Vegas, like a Dubai, quite possibly a stay, but as far as New York City goes, I'm gonna go go. Uh, I think it's really hit or miss. However, I will say, I think it's a concept that will make money. I think it's for a totally different market. I think it's for the late night crowd. I think that location is staying. I do not think that they're opening up all around New York, but I think that one's staying. All right, you guys, next up on Stay or Go, of course, we have the trend of major subculture brands. For example, the legendary Rugrats collaborating with a food brand, namely ice cream. They just bring a whole new level of like, you know, consumer goods. A lot of times people are thinking, you know, toys and things of that nature. We have edible food. And of course, we're at Milk and Cream Cereal Bar. Listen, guys, you're looking at a Reptar smoothie, a Reptar swirl, and a Reptar bar. Andrew, how'd you say Reptar? Reptar. All right, first out of three, we got the Reptar swirl. Of course, you see the green chocolate on here. Guys, I think back in the day, when you saw something green, it was chocolate, it probably didn't taste good. Nowadays, you know, gastronomy and just modern technology, it's probably gonna taste good. The chocolate tastes like fruity pebbles. All right, so here we got the Reptar ice cream bar. What's he doing on the television? I'm assuming it's gonna be mint chocolate ice cream with this very crunchy uh, hard top. I haven't had an ice cream bar in a while, so you see me legitimately smiling. I'm gonna go in on for a second bite. That's how you know it's good. Of course. I don't want to interrupt. This is good. This is fire. No, that's not mint. That's a caramel base. It has Kit Kat and it has chocolate covered marshmallow. Bro. Me and my team have been working on this for about six months. Bro. You can believe the hype or don't. We literally 
grew up on 90s Nickelodeon, Rugrats, Doug, all that good stuff, mm -hmm. and we're finally able to kind of bring those things that are part of the cartoon into real life. All right, I'm gonna try this Reptar slushy. It's got some uh, popping bobas on top. Yeah. All right, so as far as this trend of F&B fusing with pop culture and cartoons and nostalgia, I think this trend is to, is here to stay. Shout out to Milk and Cream. I think they do the best job in New York City. Straight up, this Reptar chocolate ice cream bar from Milk and Cream is the best ice cream bar I have ever had in my life. Hey guys, just a real quick word from our sponsor for today's video, Rev Rides. You know us, Foam Bros. We personally love using scooters to get around New York City. I am looking at the VSET 9 Plus and the VSET A Plus, guys. Right now, I think that these are the two best commuter scooters available on the market. I think for the VSET 9 Plus, the dual motors provide a lot of power for the size and price point. Most competing units at this size and price point are single motor. This is double motor. And as far as the V set 8 Plus, it has dual spring suspension. While not as comfortable as the 9 Plus, it is better than most competing models in its price range and size class. Look, you guys, the V set 8 is very small. Again, guys, huge shout out to Rev Rides for sponsoring this video. I think the V set series is amazing. Check it out at Rev Rides. All right, Marco, we are in front of a spot that I thought for a second was a Beijing gym being spot, but it's actually more based off a Taiwanese show dropping. You probably haven't had this before either way. I never had it before. Uh, I heard of the, the John Bings before, but I never never ate it before. Um, but I mean, this one, can I hear you say it? This one's more of a show dropping. Show dropping. And as Italian, we only say bada bing. <laughs> what type of bing are we talking in? Hey. Yeah, you got, do you have a do rag on right now? Nah, I have the headband on. Oh, okay. Oh, yes, sir. Like that. Hey, let me see some moves with it. Let me see some moves. Oh. Oh. <laughs> All right, you guys, we are at Dragon Bing looking at the fusion show dwabings, essentially a very Taiwanese style. You can often get this at Taiwanese night markets. This is their own version of a Dragon Bing, but the traditional one is show dwabing. Show dwabing. It's pretty interesting. It's like really um, is like a fusion. That's so tasty. Yo, this is almost like a roti, right? Yeah, you know what? I'm going to say the beef definitely tastes like from a, a Chinese based beef, if that makes sense. I like it a lot. It's a little bit more like Western than I thought, like Western Tex-Mex, but actually I like it. Mm. I got the roast pork one. When it comes to the Bings, I definitely think this type of scallion pancake, the show dropping, is way more appealing to a lot of people even than the uh, millet crepe, which is like the Jan Bing. We got the roti and curry. Guys, Dragon Bing, I think this is my favorite stall at Essex Market because you cannot find this anywhere else. It's an easy save for me, no doubt about it. And I'm coming back here. Simple concept, you're just replacing the carb. It's chewy, flaky, delicious, right? It would not be a fun gross food without me being the mixologist. Pull the culture right here. There we go. The chashu show dropping with curry sauce. That makes everything better. Wow. All right, so our next spot on Stay or Go is Birria LES, and I'm here with the owner, Iggy. Iggy, now, you're actually of a Bangladeshi background. Correct. I was like, we gotta bring something up for the halal community. Three months later, here we are. It's also authentic Mexican cuisine. Like, we have a Mexican partner also, like one of our partners from Mexico, and- Everyone... I've never had chicken birria. Correct. I've only had beef or goat. So everyone kept saying that beef birria is it's a hit, everyone loves it. You know, I do like three types of different cuts. Chicken beer, it got me a little scared. I was like, it's gonna be dry. But my sh our chef, also our partner, Raymundo, he, his chicken beer, it might be better than our beef. Might be better. All right, well, I got the queso chicken beer <laughs> and I got the queso beef beer. I'm gonna compare the two. Guys, this is Stay or Go, beer LES. All right, Iggy, we got the tacos here, man. Can you break down what I'm looking at? So this right here is a chicken beer, a beer chicken as we call it sour cream on top, cilantro, onions, and our slow cooked chicken that we cook for five hours. So I got to start off with the chicken birria because I'm excited. This is the new thing right here. This is the first time I've ever seen or heard of chicken birria tacos. I like that. That is like really juicy shredded chicken. This reminds me of the other uh, chicken that you might get, um, but it's just a lot juicier and a lot more soupier. So I'm liking this one. Oh. Uh. Three, two, one. Mm. All right, all in all, 
I'm gonna still roll with the beef birria here, but I'm gonna get it with the queso. It's the cheese. It's a little bit extra, but I think it's totally worth it, guys. And definitely get the small consomme because when you dip it in there, it just adds extra flavor. This is the tostada. Basically fried tortillas to a crisp. It's like a, becomes a hard chip. You throw on some beef birria, a little bit of cheese, cilantro. Top it off with a little bit of consomme right here. Ooh. Mm. All right, so whether the halal trend is gonna stay or go, of course it's gonna stay. It's opening up the market. It's allowing people to eat foods that they hadn't been able to eat before. So, Birria, I think it's here to stay. It's me, David, and Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, the next trend we are exploring on stay or go is Malaysian and Thai chicken and rice. Yeah, chicken and rice is something that we all enjoyed growing up eating, and I think it is more prevalent on the West Coast, but it is making its way into the East Coast. There's obviously some dedicated chains out here, like Guy that is serving just the Kowloon Guy, but here at Madame Passar, they're serving the Malaysian style chicken and rice. And uh, Malaysian brown roasted chicken, because there's always roasted, steamed, boiled, and then there's fried. So you got different options when it comes to chicken and rice. This what? spot is authentic, all right? What are you talking about? Just try it. All right, you guys, we're looking at two different chickens here, and this is what they specialize here at Madame Passar. This is a curry chicken with potato, and we're gonna throw it over soy sauce and noodles, I believe. Wow, that looks delicious, man. I can see the pieces of lemongrass in that curry chicken. Malaysian, Malaysian roast, roast chicken. chicken. Do you want some sauce? I'm good. Yeah, I'm going straight it. chicken Dude. leg. Dude. That's it. Dude. Going Dude. with the hot sauce. Gonna hit mine with a little bit of the chili. I would say, guys, that mm. chicken and rice is a perfect lunch meal. Whether it's Khao Moon Guy, the Malaysian style, Hainan style, Indo style, chicken and rice is like almost a top three lunch for me anywhere on earth. I like it, man. Overall, Madame Passar, Madame Passar is passing. Curry, Curry chicken, chicken noodle. noodle. Ding, 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 ding. It's a stay. I think the curry chicken one ton was a five out of five Yo. for me. The so whole times I had my chopsticks backwards. Again, that's what happens. When you bring a white guy yes. into a Asian event, that's solid. I like that. That's a stay for me. Overall, I think these two dishes are a stay because they're just so good, they're so flavorful, and they're fairly priced. Do not sleep on Malaysian food. All right, so next up on Stay or Go, right behind me is 7th Street Burgers here on 7th and 1st Ave in East Village. Now, these are two guys from Jersey, and they open up a burger spot to bring it back to the roots. They traveled around the country and found that the California Smash Burger needs to come back in its simplest, most basic form. Here, we got the simple California Burgers. Will this stay or go? Let's find out. All right, guys, we're here, here at Smash Burger, about to order. All right, man, what what, what should we get here? And you think this burger's gonna be better than In-N-Out? I'll let you decide. All right. You guys have this cool dessert called the Bananas. We just partnered up with this dope banana pudding spot in Jersey City. Uh -huh. So that's kind of a new school dessert mixed in with these old fashioned style burgers. Absolutely. All right, I'm ready for it, man. All right, so what we have here is the double cheeseburger and fries. You have your Bananas here. And looking at this burger, I mean, I'm not gonna be, I'm gonna be, Real that you could not even find a burger like this in New York like five years ago, you know? So this is definitely a trend and this definitely looks like a very simple burger, kind of like something you would get at uh, Dick's in Seattle, just sauce, a pickle, a little bit of onions, meat. There's not a whole lot of lettuce, tomatoes, onions, none of that stuff. You know, and I always felt this way about burgers that they were getting so expensive in Manhattan because they were giving you so much because uh, they were ended up being cooked by people who were like French trained or like coming from these very like high culinary backgrounds. But these guys are from Jersey. Like this, one of the partners here, they just own a bunch of other burger spots, but this is the most simplest basic form of a cheeseburger right here. It's delicious. All right. All right, as comparing it to Dick's in Seattle, it's actually definitely higher quality than Dick's, so it probably beats that, even though I'm from Seattle. Shout out to the 206. I still might take this over in and out just because of the quality of the meat. And I actually prefer this bun over the in and out bun because the, the in and out bun can get a little bit uh, a little bit dry and a little bit crusty. All right, so even though they got some old school classic burgers, they got some new school desserts. They have bananas. This is banana pudding. This is the original flavor. And this is the ube one because shout out to bananas. It's actually owned by Filipinos. So my conclusion is, for the classic California Americana cheeseburger, 
to stay or go in New York. I think it stays. I don't think every burger shop follows suit, but I think there's a few more of these that pop up and people are gonna make this part of their regular diet. Is electric burrito. Now these owners are from San Diego and they wanted to bring San Diego style Mexican burritos to New York City. And when we're talking about San Diego, burritos, we're talking about surf and turf. You know, things that are not quite maybe what they would eat in Mexico, but you know, what's very popular on the West Coast. I've been to San Diego, I wanna say one thing. West Coast is the best coast for burritos, but maybe we'll find out if this could be a stay. Well, hey, I just ordered to go and I'll let you, let you know, man, they're a little pricey. Yo, you know where you like in San Diego? You like that little Italy. Oh, I mean, that was the first place I went, so yeah. when I went It's there. a lot nicer than New York's. It is, a lot hey, cleaner, it a might, lot cleaner. I, I heard it, it might have been started by Northern Italians, that's why. That's probably what it is. Those <laughs> Sicilians down there are a little dirty. Yeah. Uh, Alex, the other, uh, my partner here, he's, uh, he's San Diego. Okay, he's nice. Born and raised nice. In All right. yeah. Just get the beach vibes, dude. Just... I'm to get my surfboard right now. <laughs> They, they did an authentic job. They did a good job of replicating that energy. All right, you guys, we are uh, looking at our haul here from Electric Burrito. Um, you know, we're originally from the West Coast. Our sister used to live in San Diego. This is a uh, breakfast burrito with everything in it, with fries, as well as carne asada, eggs. And this is surf and turf. This is shrimp and carne asada. I want that. I love, this is how you can tell a good San Diego burrito is that you see the different colors. You see the red from the tomato. You got the green, the guac, the, the egg. You have all the, you know, <laughs> meats on this side. No, this is an interesting, like you would say growing up, New York City did not have access to these. Oh, a no surf way. and turf San Diego no burritos. Right? San Diego burritos. Mm. That's a good burrito. Mm. There's a ton of, ton of food in there. Really good. I like it so far. I gotta take a couple more bites though. I like it so far. For 16, $17, I could use a little bit more shrimp. I'm wow. gonna keep it real. Gotta keep it real, gotta keep it real. Listen, I'm not gonna lie. I'm getting past the meat already and I'm hitting a lot of rice here. I'm not mad about the flavor. I like it, but it's true for that price. I would like a little bit more. Really good West Coast meets a Big Apple. I'm gonna give this a stay. All right, you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and give my burrito, Surf and Turf, a 3.5 out of five. Okay, this is really good. Disgraceful. But, I, think, but no. I, just think, I just think that it just needed more shrimp. And that's really what always defines Surf and Turf to me, whether I was at a Baja spot in LA or in San Diego on Pacific Beach or Kearney Mesa. Andrew, what, what do you think, man? I think it's gonna stay, but I need more shrimp.